Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a toilet, a system and a toilet seat. When you buy a full package like this from Bathroom Mountain, all the components will be included. Of course, the toilet, the system, a flush valve, a filling valve, the brackets, nuts, bolts and washers. And of course, the toilet seat. The only things that you'll need as an extra is the pan connector, which goes on the back of the toilet and is connected to the waste and a cold water filling valve, which of course is connected to the mains and the bottom of the system. This particular one has an isolation valve on. So the first stage is to put all the components together and fit them inside the system. And most of the time, the mechanics within that were pretty similar across various different models, but it's always wise to read the instructions before you start putting them together. So the two main components within the system is going to be the filling valve and the flush valve. And we have pre-cut holes already in the bottom here. So we have two bolts like this, which have got a rubber bung on the end of it already attached. These will slide through and come out the bottom here. Same again with this one. And you've got some nuts that are going to tighten up on the bottom of them when that's attached to the top of the toilet. Same again on these, we'll have a rubber washer already fitted on here. And this will now slide through this hole. Line it up, push it through. And you'll feel the rubber washer inside of that kind of slot into the top of that hole. So you have the washer, which slides on the top, and then the nut can start to be hand tightened up for now. And then hold the filling pipe on the inside while you tighten that up. as far as you can by hand and we'll come back to that in a moment with the wrench just tightening up that little bit more but for the moment we might need a little bit of movement while we put the next valve in and the next one is the flush valve which also has a rubber washer at the bottom of there so we slide that in the center and again the rubber washer around there, you can feel it kind of bung into the position where it needs to be. Plastic washer on there, and the large nut lines up with the thread and is hand tightened. The tighter we do these, it's pulling it tighter into the base of the system. Once you've got it tight, just make sure that your bolts are coming out the bottom there. You don't want to push them back in because it's a little bit difficult then to get your hands back in and pull them through with this being a nice slimline one. Okay. So now the fill valve and the flush valve are in position in here. You just want to get that lined up for the center like this. That there is where your flush button is going to be pressing. So when the lid's fitted on and the push button, you've got two options. So now you're happy you've got them firmly fixed into position, you can spin this round and then try to tighten these just that little bit more. So I'm going to use a wrench just very, very gently and just give that about half a turn. That's all it needs. You've got to remember that these are plastic connections on here. They don't need to be over tightened because you will cross the thread. And this one is probably going to be about a quarter of a turn. Now bear in mind these are a plastic thread with a plastic nut on there. So once you've tightened them as far as you can by hand, 
you'll find they only need about a quarter of a turn with your pliers or your wrench. You don't want to over tighten them because you can damage the thread. Perfect. So my next stage is to attach the system to the top of the toilet pan itself. So when we look at the toilet here, you'll see a variety of different holes in there. That's the centre point which will house this very rubbery flexible washer and that sits on there. The two small bolts we've got here and here are going to slide into here and then these will allow the water. One is designed for of course the water coming in and on some systems you'll have a separate overflow so that's designed for the water escaping. But with a new modern toilet like this the overflow mechanism is built within the system. So now I can lift the system in place and start to lower it down onto the top of the toilet. Just making sure that I can get the bolts coming through here and of course that thread there. Now this at the moment is going to feel a little bit wobbly so we take our plastic wing nuts which are these and start to screw them in on the underside of the thread below here. They're quite easy to do. Take it right the way up to the top and then you can do the same on the opposite side. Keep tweaking both of them until you've got the system sitting flush to the pan. Perfect. You can now remove the screwdriver and that system is fitted perfectly in place on the toilet. The next stage is now to connect the main water flexi hose to the bottom of here where the thread is coming out. So this already has a built-in washer with inside it. Make sure that that is in place. Offer that up into position and start to turn it clockwise as tight as you can by hand. And then we are going to have to get a little spanner on there because we will have the full mains water pressure coming through here when it's connected. Okay, so that's as tight as I can go by hand and I'm just going to get an adjustable spanner and tweak that a little bit more. Again, be cautious as you're doing this because it is a metal nut going onto a plastic thread. It's probably just about a quarter of a turn. Yeah, once you feel that tighten up then just stop on there. And that's got it. Now the next stage, I'll take this pan connector, which connects the back of the toilet to the actual four inch waste pipe. It's got two rubber ends on, one will slide over the pipe on there, put it right up so that rim touches it. And then that's ready then to go straight into the four inch waste. Okay, so now the next stage, before I bring this over to this side and offer it up against the wall, is to have a look if any alterations need to be done on your pipes. This is the four inch waste, of course. We've got a little bit of flexibility in that, there's foam around it, and I've got my 15 mil cold feed coming in here. Now this has got an isolation valve on, so of course that can be left on, and I'd need to add a piece of pipe on to go into my connection on there, which already has a built-in isolator, or I can remove this one. Okay, so using a screwdriver, slowly open that valve, although I have turned it off by the mains, there may still be, oh, only a little bit, there may still be a bit of water in the pipes if they're higher up. There's not much in that. So now I can take my spanners and remove this, holding it in the centre and loosening off the bolt at the back. Now, although that's loose, this will come off, but you might find that the olive on there is quite tight and not coming off. You can leave these ones on and take them off 
the one that's already connected to the toilet. Now the general rule of thumb is that you tile the walls first before you're actually fitting your toilet. Of course, this is only for demonstration purposes, but here we'd have, we've got concrete boards on here. We'd tile the wall, cut all around the pipes, let it set, grout it, seal it if they're required, and then you'd start to fit your toilet on there. And the reason we do that is, if you ever change your toilet and system further down the line, and you've cut your tiles around it, you're governed with what size system you can use on there. So always tile down the back first, and then choose your toilet, and that can be mounted on top of the tiles. Now I'm going to line up the waste pipe first. We've got a couple of millimetres discrepancy, but once that slides up onto here, of course that's going to go butt up to the wall and going to be fixed in there. Don't worry about this at the moment being loose. This all gets fixed down to the floor later on. But I can see that my waste now is just going inside this pan connector. Once I've slid that in, that's it. That's as far as I can go with that. We don't have to worry about the mains connecting at the minute. We just want to make sure that that is in position. And then your toilet is as far up. Of course, we would have had tiles on here, so this is butt right up against the wall. The two areas where we need to mark this is for the drilling purposes. So we've got two manufactured holes in the back of the system, which are going to be marked on the wall. And then the underside of here will be fixed down with brackets on the inside. But first of all, we just need to mark it around the base first, and then we remove it. But I'm going to pop a spirit level across the top and just make sure that it is sitting level. See, I'm probably a millimetre or so out there, and this is what you're going to find at home, you know. Your floor might not be absolutely perfect, and you might have a small discrepancy. So there is a couple of ways of, of altering that. Our two wing nuts that hold these down at the bottom, they can be tweaked just a fraction to compensate that out. Or when we fix the toilet down to the base, we will be putting a line of silicone around there, and then we've got two brackets that bolt in. So again, a millimetre or so can be adjusted there too. So once I'm happy with that position, I'm going to take my pen, do a couple of little marks in here, on there, because it has to be taken back out to be able to drill these positions. And then I'm going to just draw a little line around here. Now here is where the screw's going to go in and drive into the bracket. So I need to put another little pen mark just underneath there, and the same the opposite side. Okay, so I'll move this back out of the way now. And we have these two brackets that need to be fitted and fixed to the floor in this position. Now we have to bear in mind the thickness of this, so we set that back from our line that we've drawn. Now lie your toilet over to one side, take your tape measure, measure the inside width of the base of the pan. This should be normally around 10 millimeters wide. Place your bracket within your marked area, set it back 10 millimeters, and use your pen to mark where the pre-drilled holes are. Now before you drill the floor or walls, use a pipe detector to check that there is no pipes or cables behind the surfaces. And then you're safe to drill. I'm using a masonry drill bit with the drill settings on hammer action. Once you've drilled your six millimetre clearance holes, then place in the red plugs, push them down as far as you can with your thumb. Now to stop the drill bit slipping on the porcelain tiles on the floor, it's always wise to put a little bit of tape on there, remark it, and then you can start drilling. Now I'm using a special drill bit for drilling these tiles, which of course are available from Tile Mountain. Now the holes are drilled in the tiles, I'm going to push down the plugs as far as I can with my hand and then give them a little tap. Then I can place the brackets directly on top and drive in the bolts.
screw them down so they're nice and secure, leaving you 10 millimeters to the outside edge. And of course, taking the tape off. Not that it's gonna get seen underneath there, but it certainly would off this edge here. Okay, so now the brackets are fixed firmly to the floor and the raw plugs are in the wall. We can now, or well before we put the toilet back in place here now, I'm gonna get some uh, clear silicone or multi-purpose adhesive and put a thin line all the way around my pencil mark there. Place a couple of these packers. It's just little plastic packers just in here. These are gonna be temporary. Set into position, I bring the toilet, slide it in, offer that pipe up again so it slides onto there and then bed it into the silicone. Once it's bedded into the silicone, that's where we can do any adjustments with the spirit level if needed. And then we'll drive some screws through the side of the toilet into these brackets and that'll hold the pan in situ. Perfect. So that's a thin bed, probably about six or eight millimeters thick all the way around there. Of course, that will squash down with the weight of the pan. So what I'm gonna do is place some of these little plastic, these are window packers, just underneath here, so it doesn't all ooze out if the pan is pressed down in one corner. And then once the pan's sat into position, we can offer up the screws, start to tighten them up, get it level and pull these out. Now you can carefully lift your toilet and the pan and place it into position where you've marked up and applied the silicone. The main weight of that now is on the four plastic packs and it's allowing me to just manoeuvre into position and slide in. My pan connector at the back, which is quite tricky. Okay, and that still allows you to move the toilet base around a little bit if needed, because remember we want it pushed up to the back of here. Okay, so my pan connector is now inserted into the four inch waste pipe, and that's quite a nice snug fit. The system itself is pushed up as far against the wall as possible. My screw holes are lined up with the plugs along there. A little bit of my adhesive has been pushed around a little bit, but that's not a problem. The packs are in place. We've still got a healthy line all the way around there. I will be now connecting the mains up to here, but just looking now, my copper pipe, when I put that on, it's a little bit tight. So I am gonna cut that back just about 40, 40 millimeters in, and then I'll get that on there a little bit easier then. Once that's connected up, I can then commit to fixing this down permanently. A couple of screws in the top, put my screws through here, which will bite into the brackets, and then we'll put a fresh line of adhesive in there and move these packs and then just slowly tighten everything up till it bites and spill it level on the top and check that it's perfectly level. So I'm now going to cut down the 15 millimeter water pipe, then unscrew the nut, slide that over the pipe with the olive and then the isolation valve can be slid over to the pipe. Pull these together with your finger at first and start to tighten them up. Once you've got it as tight as you can with your fingers, then use your wrench and some pliers and tighten them up. So now I'm using a crystal clear multi-use adhesive to go along the bottom of the pan where it meets the tiles. I'm also putting two large blobs on the back of the system just to keep it away from the wall, about 10 or 15 millimeters. 
Now we're ready to screw the system to the wall. Don't forget to put the white grommets around the metal screws before you slide them through the holes on the system. Then you can drive the screws into the pre-drilled holes with the plugs in you did earlier. We slide that into there, pop that screw in. That's going to find one of those holes in that bracket. And then we can start to turn that out. We can do the same before I tighten that all the way up. Do the same on the other side. Okay. So now we've got a bite on both of them screws in the brackets. I'm going to remove my packs. And let that just settle onto the adhesive. If we're happy with that, it's sitting on that adhesive, now we can commit to fixing these in permanently. And then just before it goes all the way, remember these are ceramic, so you have to be delicate. Got it, check the other side. You can just feel them biting that plastic bracket behind it that's bolted to the floor. Once you get a nice snug bite on that, that toilet now is feeling pretty solid. So you can get your caps, put these little caps over the top of there. Same again the other side. You can use a silicone wipe to remove any excess adhesive before it dries around the bottom of the pan. Whilst I'm waiting for the adhesive to dry on the underside of the toilet pan, I can put the components together on the last two items. One is the lid, which has the flush button. And this is easy to fit. You unscrew the bolt off here. Slide in there. Hold it quite tight and then take your nut and start to thread that. And that only needs to be hand tightened. So that's the lid and the flush button finished. And now this toilet seat has a bracket that slides in and out of here, which attaches the seat itself to the top of the pan. However, this has to be bolted that way around to the top of the pan with these little devices. Place them into position and then using a flat screwdriver, start to wind the screws up tight, which will open it up at the bottom and hold it into position. Okay, nice and tight now. So this toilet bracket on the back of it should slide into place. Ah, there's a little lock on the back of it, perfect. Slides in, now it's locked. Lid comes up, the seat itself, and of course this is a slow closure. As you can see, it's quite a slow one. It might speed up a little bit once it's been used a bit. And then the next stage is our top, which will just sit straight on to here. And your flush will be in there. So now you can turn the water pressure on, let the system fill up, test that a couple of times to see that you're happy with it. I'm going to leave the adhesive to dry overnight, and then I'm going to come back tomorrow and do a nice clean line of silicone around the bottom base of the toilet. Now to finish the bottom of the toilet off, I'm now going to apply a nice clean white line of waterproof silicone. This will go all the way around the base of the pan where it meets the tiles, and then you can smooth this off with your finger. So that's how you fit and plumb an entire toilet system. If you're looking for more videos, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and keep in touch on social media. But if you just want to know about the vast range of products that Bathroom Mountain stock, 
head over to their website, bathroommountain.co.uk.